In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get Windows 3.11 installed on your Super Nintendo Classic using HackChi. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so before we get started, there's going to be a ton of people that are going to ask why on earth you would want to install Windows 3.11 on your Super Nintendo Classic. And to them, I say why not? There isn't really any amazing reason that you're going to want to do this. Obviously, you are very limited when you are running a very old version of Windows. There isn't even things like USB support or any of those sort of things. There's no network support yet. But uh, the developer who's working on this says that he's looking to port a bunch of stuff into it. And in addition to that, he's actually working on a few other operating systems. So I'm not going to say too, too much, but I can tell you that some of the stuff that's hopefully going to be coming down the pipeline will be a lot better and will be a lot more fun to use and uh, there's some stuff there that hits home for me from when I was a kid so I'm certainly looking forward to that. Now jumping on into it, I do want to give a shout out to DNA64. He is the developer who approached me with this and he's the one who's doing all of this stuff. Uh, he's currently got it set up so that way it can run on the Super Nintendo Classic and the NES Classic. He is currently running some tests and some coding work to see if he can get it running on the PlayStation Classic and also on the Sega Genesis Mini. So if you're hoping to get this on some of the other consoles, uh, I would just hang tight. It should be coming out and I'd imagine that the installation process will be very similar. That being said, there are some prerequisites that we need uh, before we can actually get this thing started. I'm doing this tutorial based off the assumption that you already have a Super Nintendo Classic and that it's already been modded with HackChi with the latest kernel. And the reason you need that latest kernel is because we need to make sure that we have OTG support enabled and working with our Super Nintendo Classic. In terms of an OTG device, the one that I recommend I will throw up on screen right now. This is also known as an Octopus OTG. It has multiple inputs for different USB ports. This is the one that I'd recommend simply because we are going to want to have a USB drive and we're also going to need additional USB ports to plug in things like keyboards, mice, things like that. So this is definitely the one that I recommend. I will leave a link to it in the description down below if you guys don't already have it. The next big thing that we're going to need before we can actually do anything here is you are going to need to source your own copy of Windows 3.11. I cannot tell you where to get it for obvious reasons, um, but you'll have to do your own search. And what you're essentially going to look for is the uh, image files, which should be six different uh, floppy disk image files. Now, we aren't able to use the image files the way they are. We still have to open them up and we have to extract stuff, but I'll show you guys how to do that. But in terms of where to get this, I cannot tell you. You will have to source it on your own, but I'm sure a quick Google search will help you guys find what you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up. The first thing that we're going to need to do is hop on over to the GitHub where all the information is. Now I'm going to leave links to everything as always in the description down below. So if you guys just want to follow along with the video, you'll be able to grab everything as you need it. Now we're going to go on down and there is a bunch of information and a bunch of stuff that we're going to need to download. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the clone or download button, and then we're going to download it as a zip. We're going to save it right to the desktop. And once that is saved, I'm just going to pull it over. So I've got it right over here. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to extract it to its own folder. So once that's done, it should populate right over here. There it is. And we can get rid of that. So now we have everything that we're going to need. If we double click this, we can actually drag that out and we can go ahead and grab everything that we need. So we're going to have our DOS box configs and then we're also going to have our setups and our licenses and things like that. So this is pretty much everything that we're going to need aside from the Windows image files as well. So we're going to go ahead and open up HackChi now and this is HackChi 2 CE 3.7. So make sure that you are on that and on the latest version. Additionally, you'll notice that I don't actually have my Super Nintendo Classic connected in and it's not currently online. That's totally fine because the way that I'm going to install this on my Super Nintendo Classic, I actually recommend that you do it on a USB drive, not on the actual Classic itself. I just personally think that's a better way to go. So that would be my recommendation. So you don't actually really need to connect your Super Nintendo Classic to your PC. 
unless you don't already have it hacked, in which case you'll need to get it hacked. Additionally, we're going to need to go into our module section and we're going to go into the KMFD mods hub and there's going to be a couple things that we need to install. So if you haven't already done this, you're going to need one form of RetroArch. You can use RetroArch 184 Extreme. Uh, the Ozone theme is fine. That's the one that I would recommend. And then after you've double clicked and downloaded the module, you're also going to need to get the core specifically for DOS and for Microsoft. So if you're gonna scroll down to Microsoft, you're gonna need to get this core right here, the DOSBox SVN version. So that's also very important. You'll download that module. And then once it's downloaded, we can close it. You would go over to modules, install extra modules, and then you would select the cores and the RetroArch version that you're gonna want and hit okay. It'll flash the console, it'll install everything that you need, but these are very important steps. Make sure you have RetroArch installed and make sure you have the DOSBox SVN version installed as well. Mine is already good to go. Again, I don't have my Super Nintendo connected into my PC. Those are all things that you need to do before we can actually load Windows into this thing. Okay, so now that our Super Nintendo Classic is prepped and ready, and we are ready to get this thing loaded up, all that we need to do is double click on this Win Classic Master folder that we just downloaded from GitHub. And you're gonna see in here, there is actually a file called clv-o-hnuza. We're gonna to need to click on this and we need to drag it over to our hack sheet. And what you're gonna notice is that it does accept it and it'll pull it up right away as Microsoft Windows 3.11. And when you click on that and we go over to artwork, everything's preloaded. Now, if you don't want this artwork and you want the actual Windows 3.11, just hit the Google button and it should populate and you can grab this from here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Double click on that and that's what it'll switch over to. So if that's something that you prefer, you can absolutely do that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is right now. The next step that we need to do is we need to right click on our Microsoft Windows 3.11 and we need to show it in Windows Explorer because we have to add some files in here and we also need to add the installer. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. As you can see here, it's going to give us a bunch of different information. We've got an install folder and we have a couple config files in here as well. We're going to need to replace this config file with the correct one for our version of Super Nintendo Classic, as well as whether or not we're installing it directly on the internal memory or on a USB. There is different configuration files depending on what you are doing. So let's go ahead and do that first. We're going to open up this Win Classic folder again. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so it's easier to see. We're going to go into the DOSBox configs. And what you're going to see is in here, there's three different folders, NES, Sega, and SNES. If you were installing this on the NES Classic, you would double click on NES. If you were installing this on SNES Classic, you're gonna double click on SNES. Currently, Sega has not been tested and I don't know if it works, so I would recommend not doing it on Sega until it's been confirmed working. So we're gonna jump into the SNES folder and then here you have the option to either select the European version, Japanese version, or the US version. I have a US Super Nintendo, so that's what I'm gonna double click on. Then again, we're given two options, a NAND option, which would be the internal memory installation or USB option. Again, I recommend installing this on a USB drive. That is what I think is the best way to go. But if you want to install this directly on the internal memory of your Super Nintendo Classic, you can absolutely do that using the NAND options. So we're gonna jump into USB and then we've got three different folders in here. We've got an install folder, we've got a run folder, and we've got an uninstall folder. We are going to use the install folder first, then we're gonna eventually go into run, and the uninstall folder is going to give us the option to uninstall this later on down the road if we decide to do that. So we're gonna go into install, and in here you're gonna see there is a dosbox.config file. We are going to go ahead and we are going to actually right click and copy this over here. If you just drag and drop, it will literally just pull it from the install folder and dump it into the uh, CLV folder, which we don't want to do. We want to copy it so we always have access to our master files. So we'll hit copy here. It's going to ask if we want to replace the file in the destination. The answer to that is yes. And that's great. So now that we've transferred this over, we are done with this config file. The next thing that we need to do is transfer all of our Windows setup files 
from our images into this folder right over here. So we're gonna double click on it. And as you can see, it says place windows setup files here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And as you can see, we've got our image files right over here. And there are six different floppy disk images. And uh, if you're not familiar with Windows 3.11 or any of the older versions of Windows, they essentially came on a bunch of different floppy disks. And to show you guys what that would look like, these are the actual floppy disk images of what they would be. So very similar to how back in the mid 90s to late 90s, we used to have uh, CDs installed for Windows. And sometimes you'd get two or three disks that you would have to rotate through. The same is true with the older versions just on a floppy disk. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to mount these disk images in a way that we can access all the files from within them. So the easiest way to do it is to use this software, which I've got right over here. It's called MDisk Virtual Disk Driver. Now I'll leave a download link in the description down below. It's relatively simple. You're gonna double click on it. It's gonna open up this virtual disk driver. We're gonna mount a new disk. You have to select your image file. So in this case, we're gonna select disk one. We're gonna hit open. And then we need to make sure that we're uh, notifying it that it is a floppy disk type because if you try to mount this image just in Windows, it won't allow it to because it's not the proper format. So you need to make sure that you select floppy as the device type, and then you hit OK. And what that's gonna do is it's going to mount this disk in a way that we can actually grab it, double click on it, it'll open up, and as you can see, we actually have all of the uh, setup files here. And what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to go ahead and pretty much grab everything, we're gonna copy it and we're gonna dump it into this install folder. So we're gonna hit control V, it's gonna paste it here and then we're good. Next, we have to close this and we actually have to repeat the step for every single disc. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. It's gonna be gone. We need to mount a new disc. We're gonna select our disc two. We're going to choose floppy. We're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna double click on it and it should open up as well. And here it is. So again, we're going to grab everything. We're going to copy it. We're going to go back to our install folder and we're going to paste it. And now we're going to have all those files there as well. And like I said, we have to do that for disk three, four, five, and six. So what I'm actually going to do is fast forward through that process, but that is what we need to do for each disk. Okay, so now that we've done that with all six of our image files, uh, which only took about two or three minutes after you kind of get in the swing of things. So we can go ahead and close our MDisk virtual disk driver software. And as you can see, now we have all the different setup files for our Windows 3.11 ready to go. So we can go ahead and close this uh, and we can actually close that as well. The next thing that we need to do is we need to export this information from Hackchi to our USB drive. So we're gonna go ahead and hit export to USB. It's gonna ask us where do we wanna export it to? So I've already got my uh, USB drive connected in and I'm gonna make the recommendation that you have your USB drive formatted as FAT32. I tried using XFAT, I've tried using NTFS and I found that FAT32 got me the best results and I had the fewest errors. So that would be the way to go. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's going to ask us if we want to create any folders or anything like that. And I'm going to make sure that it is staying uh, on the home page. And the reason for that is because the way it's currently coded with the directory, it's going to be looking for everything on the home page of the SNES Classic. So we don't want to be changing that up too much. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to copy the games and our new operating system onto our USB drive, which should only take a second or so. Perfect, and we're gonna go ahead and hit OK. And as you guys can see here, now we've got our USB drive that popped up and it's a zero zero. And this is going to be our folder right here. So if we double click on it, you can see all of our information is here. There's the DOSBox uh, .config file and inside of the install folder, you've got all of our uh, Windows setup files. So now what we need to do is we need to throw our USB drive into our Super Nintendo Classic, and I'm gonna have it connected in via, obviously, the OTG adapter in the back because there aren't any other USB ports on the Super Nintendo Classic. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, switch over to the Super Nintendo Classic, and I'll see you guys in a second. 
Okay, so because I had done a fresh install of Hackchi on the Super Nintendo Classic, it's gonna treat this as though it's booting up for the very first time. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the A button on English. We're gonna accept that, we're gonna hit okay. And we are gonna be on our main screen. So as you can probably see here, everything looks really normal, but if you look at the carousel underneath all the games, you will notice that there is the uh, Windows version 3.1 right here. And the next step that we're gonna actually need to do is make sure that we've got some sort of a, a mouse and keyboard connected. Your keyboard is much more important, but if you have one of those mouse keyboard combinations, uh, you can use one of those. Uh, I'm simply just using a standard uh, wireless mouse and keyboard with a, uh, with a wireless dongle that's connected into the OTG adapter. So again, that's very important. It needs to be in there. Otherwise you're not really gonna be able to control anything within Windows. So first thing that we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and hit A on Windows uh, 3.1. And everything should be good to go. You shouldn't have any errors. It should automatically populate to the Windows setup. This is where you're no longer gonna be able to use your controller and you're gonna need to use the keyboard. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna prompt ourselves through the installation process. In order to continue, we need to hit enter on our keyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it's going to say that Windows is gonna provide a few different options to set up. You can either choose a custom setup or an express setup. For the purposes of this video, we are going to do the express setup. So we're gonna hit enter again. And it's gonna say, please wait while it checks and it runs through the uh, system files. Now it's gonna go ahead and start setting things up. The nice thing about this, it's going to set this up and install directly to our USB drive. So in the event that we ever wanna remove this, there is an uninstallation process, but you can also just wipe your USB drive and delete the files from Hackchi as well. So it kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility in that sense too. So after it's done that main installation, it's gonna ask us for the name that we want to label our computer or our version of Windows. Uh, obviously you can put whatever you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and type in here, uh, Restalgia. And then I'm going to hit okay with the, or I'm gonna hit continue with the mouse. Then it wants you to verify the name is correct. For me, it's fine. We're gonna hit continue. And again, if you don't have a mouse and you only had a wireless keyboard, you can tab around uh, using the tab button on the keyboard and it'll kind of bounce around through your different options and you can go ahead and hit enter. But now it's actually going to install everything for us and I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward through this process. All right, so now it's going to ask us if we want to install a printer or any of those sort of things. Obviously, we don't have any printer attached to our SNES Classic, so we've got nothing. We're gonna keep the no printer attached selected and hit install. And now it's just gonna go through a few of the main screens, make sure everything is up and running, and it's going to continue the setup. Next, we're gonna be offered an option to run a tutorial or to skip the tutorial. You can choose to run it if you want, but uh, I'm pretty familiar with this version of Windows and it's uh, really, really straightforward. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that tutorial. And now it wants you to either reboot or return to MS-DOS. And in order for this to work properly, we cannot hit reboot we must return to Microsoft DOS. So we're gonna hit that option. It's gonna take us to our command line and we simply have to just type on our keyboard exit and then hit enter. And it's gonna actually kick us back into RetroArch. So now that we're in RetroArch, we're gonna go ahead and hit the back button. We're gonna go up and we're going to choose exit RetroArch and we're gonna hit the A button. That's gonna pop us right on back to the main screen of our Super Nintendo Classic mini console. And what we need to do now is we need to jump back over to our PC because we have to change out the configuration files. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is the next time you select Windows, it's gonna just try to keep installing and trying to reinstall multiple times. We need to now tell it, hey, we've already installed Windows, we now want to run Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back on over to my PC. All right, so we are now back on my PC and I've got my USB drive plugged back into my computer. As you can see, I've got the Hackchi folder uh, right over here. What we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to go into it. We're gonna double click on the Hackchi folder, double click on games, double click on SNES-USA, go into 000, and we're gonna locate that folder that we had originally. It's called CLV0HNUZA. 
So we're gonna double click on that. What we need to now do is we need to delete all this stuff that's inside of the install folder. So we're gonna select everything and we are gonna go ahead and remove it. And it's gonna ask if we wanna delete all these files. The answer to that is yes, because we no longer need those installation folders and we don't wanna get anything confused. Next, we need to replace this dosbox.config file. This dosbox.config file tells the Super Nintendo Classic to install Windows. Now we need to replace it with the one that tells it just to run Windows. So we're gonna go back over to our Win Classic master folder that we previously downloaded. We're gonna go into DOSBox configs, SNES, USA, USB, and then we're gonna use the run option. So we're gonna double click here. And now we've got the correct file here. We're gonna right click. We're gonna drag it over here. We're gonna copy it. And we are going to replace the file in the destination. So we're gonna hit okay. We are good to go. That's pretty much all that we need to do now. Now we can jump back over to our Super Nintendo Classic with our USB drive. And we're gonna go ahead and get this thing tested and running. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. All right, guys, so here we are again on our Super Nintendo Classic. We're just gonna go ahead and navigate over to our Windows icon. And again, you need to have your mouse and keyboard connected. I'm just gonna grab mine really quickly. And all that we need to do is press A to launch Windows version 3.1. And here we are, we've got Windows running currently on our Super Nintendo Classic. Now, obviously there isn't a ton that we can do with this right now. We're gonna have a few games that are gonna pre-installed. We've also got a couple of the accessories that we can fuss around with. Um, but yeah, there's not, there's not really a whole lot we can do here. That being said, uh, DNA64 already mentioned he's porting over a ton of stuff. He's hoping to actually be able to port some of the additional drivers over. So maybe we can get some other games, maybe from like Windows 95 or any of those other types of games over. So we may actually be able to build this up and make this quite a useful little application. So definitely something to keep your eyes out for. I will be sure to let you guys know uh, what's doable uh, in the future. As soon as we've got some updates on this, I'm gonna be sure to make some additional video content for you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a peek to see what currently is here. If we double click on the games, we've got Minesweeper and we've got Solitaire. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on Solitaire. And here we go, we've got Classic Solitaire. So, you can see that it does work. Obviously, if we click on things with our mouse, it's gonna be perfectly fine. Uh, and everything actually runs and functions really, really well. So this is actually pretty cool. If we ever wanna close this, you hit the little uh, minus button up top, and we're gonna go ahead and close this. And then we can try Minesweeper to see if that loads up. And as you can see, it does. We can obviously go into our game settings and we can change the uh, difficulty if we want it to be a much larger gameplay area. Now, I actually know how Minesweeper works. A lot of people don't, but uh, definitely this is a fun game. So if you aren't familiar with this game, definitely give it a shot. It's so simple, but it's really difficult. So it's it's kind of one of those games that it's such a simple and easy game to get your mind around, but it's actually a pretty tough game to play and you could sit there for hours playing it. So again, if you've never played it, highly recommended, give it a shot. So we're gonna go ahead and close that out as well. And then we can always take a peek to see what kind of applications are gonna be here as well. So let's go ahead and close that and we're gonna jump into our applications. And uh, you can see here we've got things like card file or calendar, or we've got a calculator, but we've even got something called paintbrush. So this is kind of what the old school Microsoft Paint used to be. So definitely lots of fun things to kind of mess around with in the meantime. Obviously things are a little bit difficult. I'm using one of the worst mice I've ever used in my life. So it's a little bit choppy, but uh, if you guys have better quality stuff, it'll definitely be a lot easier to use. And we're just gonna type in Rustalgia, if I can even do it. There we go, as pathetic as that looks, there it is. So definitely something that you guys can mess around with and play with it. Let's go ahead and close this out. We are not gonna save that, that is pathetic. Okay, let's close this. And there you guys have it. Now, before I let you guys go, in order to exit out of here, it's actually really simple. If you wanted to exit out, uh, just like any of your other consoles uh, or any of your other games for the SNES Classic, you should be able to hit the reset button and it should take you back out. That being said, you can also hit the minus button. We can close everything out and this will end our Windows session. We can hit okay 
and then it'll take us back to our command line. If we type on our uh, keyboard exit and hit enter, it should take us back into RetroArch. And then of course, if we hit our reset button, that should also take us on out as well, which it does. So that's how you do it. That's pretty much it. This is Windows on the Super Nintendo Classic. It is fun, it is pointless, but it's cool at the same time, so I absolutely love it. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think, if this is even something you guys would even consider doing. Uh, definitely, I thought it was pretty cool, so that's why I obviously made a video. So, that's pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Thank you so very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got tons more other videos coming out, so I would love it if you guys uh, wanted to get a hold of that and you guys want to see that stuff. It would really, really mean a lot to me if you guys would consider supporting the channel by subscribing. But again, that's pretty much it. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.